So that being said, let's go to the fun part of this of this course, to the practice part. So for this practice part, we're going to use the Stanford and Ideal model, which has five steps with We've seen the model. The first one is empathize, because in this phase, you really want to empathize with everybody who's involved in this problem. You really want to explore the problem and you really want subjective opinions about what's happening and how people see this problem and why it's actually so complex in the first place. So start with a human experience concerning the problem, and that will give you more, more insights uh, uh, on how to do this, how to create a solution. So one of the best ways to start your innovation process um, and one of the most insightful techniques, I would say, is customer discovery interviews. So these are interviews with potential customers or potential users of what you're going to do, the, the ones that you're going to solve the problem for, actually. And you focus on how they see the problem, how they experience the problem. So don't focus on speculation, on what might happen in the future when you get this great solution that will resolve everything, but you focus on their current habits and motivations about how and why they do things, how and why they resolve this problem at the at the moment and if this is really a problem or they're not experiencing it as such um, you ask about the past and you ask about for example frequency how many times do you do things uh, every day or maybe every week or how many times would you uh, do you experience this um, also focus on spending have people tried to resolve this problem before and have they spent any money on it? Um, that's a very good indication that if you come up with a better solution, they would also spend money on your solution. So that's a very good indicator for that. So one way you could really practice this to get out the best results, the most, uh, the most insights, is to ask uh, about this problem without mentioning your ideas. So people have no clue that you're working on a solution. You're just trying to casually talk with them and uh, casually uh, get a lot of information and insights out of them, uh, talking just about the problem, not even mentioning that you're going to work on a solution. And that way you get a lot of information. Uh, be very careful with speculation to the future. Be also very careful with people saying what other people would think, uh, because we're talking about their own habits. We're talking about their own motivations and not about their projection upon masses of people or groups of people. And that will be very insightful for you. Now, observations. This is another very powerful tool if you do it the right way. If you go to somewhere that currently your user or your customer is trying to solve the problem they have, and then just observe what happens. So if you take a look at this picture, you might see this in any library or bookstore uh, just around the corner. Um, and you see this man kind of trying to read the covers of the book that are in front of him. This is something that probably book designers never thought about how people would read like the title on, on, the, on the side of their book. And it is something that uh, uh, could really indicate that there's there might be like a user problem experience there. Uh, and you get a lot of insights about that. So that is what observation can do. Now, as for myself, I particularly like these observations because these observations really give you a lot of insights in practice how people try to do things without them being trying to be polite and saying certain things just to uh, just for social reasons. Uh, it's just very straightforward, clear observation, and that's very insightful, I find. So I'm going to mention you a, uh, an example, and this example includes both customer discovery interviews as well as observations. So you can see what the effect of both of them uh, uh, really implies. So this is about Vanitech, and Vanitech was actually the first 
startup team that I was coaching uh, a long time ago. So uh, Vanitech uh, was basically trying to resolve a problem for uh, um, women who would stay at home and wanted to get a manicure, who didn't want to go out to a beauty salon to get their nails done. So they would have a manicurist coming into their home and as Benitech, they would make an application, a software platform in order to find the right manicurist and also uh, get the appointment with this manicurist to have her come to your home and paint uh, the nails. So this is in Bogota. Bogota is a very big city with a lot of traffic, very bad traffic. So this would be really a quite expensive service because there would be a lot of costs. We needed to get the manicurist to the home of the people and it's usually not next door. So uh, that would take really quite a lot of a lot of time and therefore it would be uh, more, more expensive, right? So we started with doing customer discovery interviews and we uh, interviewed women who were uh, would stay at home and we were, were really quite resourceful. Now, um, they said they were kind of interested and they liked it, getting their nails done and everything and they had a preferred manicurist, so that was okay, but they wouldn't really pay more to receive the service at home. Why was that? Because every week they would go out to their beauty salon and it was like the plan of the day for them. It was really going out of their home and doing something fun. They were enjoying it, so we were taking away basically their fun to go out to the beauty salon and we were making them pay more. So that was not going to happen really. Now that's the power of customer discovery interviews. You invalidate very quickly whether it's right what you're thinking or not, whether people are willing to pay or not willing to pay. Now we also did observations and basically we went to beauty salons and we would sit there for hours to watch what would happen. So basically in the, in the beauty salons that were in office areas of the city, something very interesting would happen because they would open in the morning, maybe nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, nothing much really would happen just until 12 o'clock. Now, Colombian lunchtime is between 12 and 2, and between 12 and 2, the women would come flowing in, basically. Uh, they wanted to get their nails done, but they were also really worried about getting to their office on time for the meeting they had scheduled, about uh, looking good for that meeting, representative for that meeting, and also having lunch on time to be able to go to work and really have a full stomach. So at 12, they would come flowing in and they were really quite stressed. So they would take a look at their watch. They would uh, uh, really not connect with the manicurist. They wouldn't really mind which one of the manicurists would paint their nails. They weren't really watching the TV. That's always in a beauty salon. Um, they were just worried about getting their nails done and having lunch on time to be able to be back in their office at two o'clock on time for their next meeting. So that was really our insight about our market segment. That was our market segment. It was not women who would stay at home and were resourceful. It was professional women who had to comply with the office hours. And they were able and perfectly willing to spend a little bit more on the manicurist coming to their office or very close to their office and not having to worry about it. So that is really the power of empathizing of this part of the process. You focus on insights, you get to know everything about the problem that there is to know, and you really can base like a next step full of confidence based on what you're uh, getting to know in this phase. So your focus should be on insights and getting to know really the headache of people, uh, what's worrying them. And if you get the headache very, very clear, then you will come up with a better solution in the end and you will come to better results in the end. So try to figure out exactly how this problem works. Uh, focus on habits and motivations. Focus on the past. Ask specific and ask about the past. Um, and uh, ask them how and why so you can really focus on those insights. And then 
you're ready to get to the next phase.